welcome to Skyhawk Pilot Lessons. This week's episode is packed full of information, and because it's so long, we're going to go ahead and let you enjoy it uninterrupted. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm Justin. And I'm Marty, and today we're going to be giving you a little bit of advice to keep you going for the rest of the semester. First thing is you're not going to want to skip class, because the second half of the semester, semester is a lot different, so you're going to make sure you're going to the classes and you're taking notes. And at the, uh, at the end of the day, when you get done with all your classes, just review through those notes. It, it won't, you know, you spend 30 minutes looking through your notes at the end of the day, it's going to make a huge difference at the end of the semester. And also, make sure you're doing some kind of physical activity, you know, a 30 minute walk a day, and you're eating right because everybody's starting to get sick, and make sure, you know, you uh, utilize student health, you can go over there and get checked up or, or whatever you need to. And uh, third of all, make sure you're doing something that's fun. You know, once you know, you don't need to study seven days a week. You need to find some time to do something for you. Go see a movie, go home for a little bit. You know, do something that just kind of relaxes you. Or you're gonna burn out, and you're not gonna want to come back next semester. And we don't want that. Yeah, and in, in addition to what Toddy said or Justin, um, it's really good to really work hard during the second half of the semester because it's gonna fly by. Thanksgiving's in a couple of weeks, and as soon as we come back from Thanksgiving, classes are practically over, and then we're going to have finals. So you really need to make sure that you're attending classes, like Justin said, and just working hard. And you need to find out what kind of finals you're going to have in your classes. Are they going to be comprehensive? If so, that's going to be information from the entire semester. Or some teachers may give finals just on that last part of the chapter or the section that was reviewed in that class. So if the, if the final is going to be comprehensive, you need to be looking over your notes, like Toddy said, just each day looking over them little by little, because trying to cram a whole semester's worth of work into one night before your final isn't going to work. So just make sure you're preparing for that time of year. We really appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you gained a lot of helpful information. Hey everybody, I'm Ashley Grimes and I'm here inside the Paul Meek Library. Last week we talked about the coffee shop and all that you can do in there. This week we're talking about the study zones, which is the main reason most people come to the Paul Meek Library. So once you step inside the library, they have this lovely poster that tells you all of the study zones that you can go to. And if you don't know where all these study areas are, then you can look at a map. There's two right here and they'll tell you exactly where they are. So let's go check out some of these areas. So right when you walk inside the library, after you come in the front door, is a place where there's couches, chairs, you can make yourself at home. They have magazines to read, they have a fireplace. It's really homey, you can come just enjoy yourself. But next let's go to the cubicles where you can get some more individualized studying done. So now we're at one of the cubicles in the library. This one just happens to have a computer, but some of them don't. If you want to surf the web, you're working on a paper, or you need the internet, then you can go to one of the cubicles downstairs, which have these computers. So now let's go talk about the study rooms. So if you don't need that individualized studying, and you're with a group, maybe you should come upstairs and do the study rooms. The study rooms are for groups of two or more, and they have the dry erase boards where you can do study sessions and teach other people what you're trying to learn. Okay, so let's do a recap. When you first walk into the Paul Meek Library, there's three zones. There's the group study zone, there's the quiet zone, and there's the absolute silent zone. So once you come in the library, find your zone, and find a place to sit, you can really get some serious studying done. Hi, my name is Audra Crowley, and today we're at the UTM bookstore with Sam Covington, which is the bookstore manager, and we're going to ask her a couple questions. What type of supplies or materials do you sell at the UTM bookstore? Not only do we sell new and used textbooks, but we also have a large supply of clothing. Everything from sweatshirts and t-shirts to sweatpants and shorts, long sleeves and everything else in between. We also have a large selection of mugs and keychains and lanyards and ID holders and lots of different things with the UTM and Skyhawk logos on them. As far as supplies go, we work with the instructors to carry the re required supplies for every class. Um, also anything that they recommend to help you with your classes. So we have also general reading books where you can get um, 
anything from uh, the best sellers to campus authors, reference books, um, study guides, and lots of other things that can help you with your classes. So the end of the semester is coming up and the, a lot of freshmen don't know how to sell back their books to the UTM bookstore. Can you tell me a little bit about this process? Sure, let's do it. Make sure that you have your Skyhawk card with you and ready to go when you come up in the line. From there, we will look at the book. It must be in resellable condition. There has to be no bite marks, no water damage, no Kool-Aid stains, no excessive highlighting because we want to be able to resell this to the next student. If you buy it, if you bought it new, you can get half of what you paid for it if we're going to use it the next semester and we don't have all that we need. If you bought it used, you also get half of what you paid for it and we lock that into the system at the beginning of the semester. If it is not being used on our campus, then we sometimes can give you a value for it if it's being used at another school. So it just depends on how high the demand is. If it's a textbook, a lot of times it'll have more demand than if it's a general reading book that you can pick up at any Barnes & Noble. You will then receive a voucher when you sell back your book. You will bring this inside the store on the same day that you sold your book and we will give you cash for the books that you sold. If you sold us back a book that you paid $100 for, you will get $50 in cash as long as it's in resellable condition and we can use it next term. If you sold back that same book used, it would be $75 and you will get $37.50 back in cash for the used book. Thank you, Sam Covington, for showing us the UTM Bookstore. And I hope all you freshmen learned something today about the UTM Bookstore and you should all stop by and visit Sam. Hi, my name is Paige Turner and I'm here with Nathan Elliott. He's the Vice President of FCA and I'm going to ask him a few questions. So Nathan, what is FCA? Well Paige, FCA stands for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and we are a student organization made up of athletes and non-athletes. So if you're interested in being a part of FCA, you don't have to be an athlete even though it says Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, it's more so just people who are interested in sports in general. So what do you do in FCA? Well, at FCA we like to split up um, what we do in the three categories. Um, first being food, then fun, and then fellowship. So every Monday night when we meet we have a free meal. And free food. It's always good. Yeah, certainly. And it's usually provided by um, local church ladies and so some good old southern church cooking. Uh, sometimes we have lasagna or chicken rotel or some kind of pasta or maybe tacos. So a good time to have a meal besides Chick-fil-A, right? Certainly, and it gets you out of the calf. Um, and also, uh, we have fun. Um, and it's a good way for you to meet people and get to know maybe uh, the quarterback of the football team or maybe the short shop, shortstop of the baseball team or maybe uh, the shortstop of the softball team or maybe the setter on the volleyball team. Um, you can get to know some of the, the athletes and maybe some just regular old Joes, Joes like myself who don't play sports but just want to go out and have a good time and uh, we try to have fun and we play games and sometimes we have an icebreaker so you can get to know one another in a humorous way <laughs> um, and also we have fellowship and we try to get more serious with that but uh, we'll break up into small groups and there'll be a leader and that leader will share a lesson um, usually focused on a passage of scripture from the Bible and we'll study that and we'll look at what that means um, for our life and we'll use sports as kind of a, a way to bring it all together and kind of see how God has a way for us to live here and what that might look like in our daily life here as a student on campus at UT Martin. So how might a freshman get involved with FCA? Um, a freshman can get involved with FCA by simply uh, coming on Monday nights at 7.45. Uh, we meet at the Interfaith Center which is located directly behind the business building. So it's not hard to find, and all you have to do is come. So if you want food, fun, and fellowship, you should come out to SCA at 745 at the Interfaith Center on Monday nights. Hi, my name is Darnisha, and today I'm here with Dr. Barber, coordinator of the Civil Rights Conference. So, Dr. Barber, what can you tell us about the Civil Rights Conference? Well, uh, UTM over the last 10 years has uh, sponsored what is really the only national uh, conference devoted to the importance of the civil rights movement and on any campus in the United States. It's the only regular, regular conference uh, devoted 
just to the Civil Rights Movement and how important that is to our history. Uh, over the years, of the last several years, we've had some really important civil rights leaders uh, speak to our conference. Uh, uh, two years back, we had a man named James Lawson, who was the leader of the Civil Rights Movement in Nashville. Uh, last year, uh, we had uh, a man named Bob Moses, who was the leader of the Civil Rights Movement in Mississippi. Um, one of our leading uh, civil rights historians has called Bob Moses the uh, Martin Luther King of Mississippi. Uh, so we are very proud and happy that we can sponsor uh, an event like this and that UTM sponsors an event like this that really highlights just how important civil rights is to uh, this country. Uh, our school and every school in the, in the country today would be different uh, were it not for the civil rights movement. So that's the basic thing we do. We try to get out how important the civil rights movement is. Okay. So, Dr. Barber, how do you think the freshmen can become involved in the civil rights conference? Well, we're very much interested in uh, getting uh, uh, as many people as we can involved. Uh, it, immediately, uh, I'd suggest uh, emailing our email address, uh, civil rights uh, at utm dot edu, one word, civil rights at utm uh, dot edu. And then next Thursday, November 17th, we will have our next meeting of the Civil Rights Conference. That will be at, at uh, in the Humanities Building, Room 210. And uh, we certainly, there's dozens of things that uh, students can get involved with in terms of uh, making this a successful event. Uh, really, the event is about students. We want students to lead what we do here. And uh, I sincerely hope that uh, everybody uh, watching this will get involved. Okay, well hopefully Dr. Barber provided you with enough information about the Civil Rights Conference and enjoy your week. Hi, my name is Paige and we're here in front of the art studio and we're about to go in and talk to David Macbeth about the Empty Bowls Project. They are actually throwing bowls today and glazing them and this is the finished project. So let's go in and see what they're up to. I don't remember what year Empty Bowls started, but it was a number of years ago in Michigan, a uh, grade school teacher challenged their class to some sort of community service project. The two young kids in the class came up with this idea that they could get a group of people together and make bowls and then they could have a kind of soup lunch or something like that and all of the proceeds from the soup lunch would go to feed the hungry in their community. And that was sort of the birth of the Empty Bowls project. It's grown to be an international project. It started in Martin when I thought I, I, we need to do something in Martin about hunger relief and I know that a lot of the church communities and a lot of the student organizations support uh, the We Care Center in Martin. And I approached the, the pastor at my church and I said what if I made 50 bowls and what maybe the youth group could be a part of helping me with this and what if we made 50 bowls and we had them at church and, and what if we said for a ten dollar donation you can get a bowl you know, and that way then our church could make a $500 uh, donation to, to We Care. And she said, why should we just do it for our church and why just 50? And I said, okay, we'll do it for the whole community and we'll do 500. And that's how it got to be what it is in, in Martin. And what it is is that a lot of the churches in, in, in uh, Martin that are, I guess, connected with Interfaith Center or involved with Interfaith Center programs, the men and women of the church bring in crock pots, huge crock pots full of these amazing soups. And, um, and it's free, it, especially free to university students, but it's, it's free to the whole community unless you just, if you want to make a $10 donation, you'll get a bowl and you'll get soup. If you just want soup, I think they're asking for a $5 donation if you don't want to involve the bowl as part of your, your effort. Thank you for tuning into this week's show. Don't forget to tune in next week, which will be our last episode of the semester.